What's going on, everybody? Back again for another week of uh, HCB. Got uh, got my co-host Tim here. What's going on, man? What's going on, bro? Uh, anyway, man, what you uh, what you been up to? So last time we talked, I was on my uh, wrestling journey, right? Going through all of, like the old WWF pay per views and stuff. I think I got I think I got all the way. I skipped, so I kind of skipped like. Like 2002 to like 2004. Yeah. And then I got to like 2006. And then mm-hmm. I just kind of stopped because uh, at that point, I think Eddie Guerrero died. And then I got close to the whole Chris Benoit thing. So I was like, bro, I don't think I would relive through that all over again. So the, that. Then I'm back on the sauce. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's Street, the sauce? Street Fighter Five. Oh, that's what we're calling. I'm back on the sauce heavily again. You know? Uh, yeah, it's bad. Just, I'm trash. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the first step. Wait a minute. You gotta, you gotta admit. You know. I know. I know. I'm in the background. I'm automatic. I just have to. Did you hear your tone shift? Yeah, I'm on the sauce. I'm on the sauce. Uh huh. What's the three five five? Uh, I mean, it ain't going so well. I'm sorry. I'll stay back here. My bad. My bad. I'm using a check like that. <laughs> I just have I, I feel good when I observe these these you know I relate to these emotions like yeah, yeah, yeah I'm trying to make a difference in the world yeah, but I just uh, every time I walk into the store I get kicked in the balls yeah you fight uh, you fight four guys from the DR and you know you know two, I'm say two I Mexican know, Rashid ladies you know Rashid you know, later secretly I live in Latin America um <laughs> it's great to be back you know I've been gone for a while <laughs> but I'm back um. Boy, no day crescendo. That's what I heard. Like, uh, let me tell you, man. So, like, my experience, like, you, like, you remember back, like, when I was just, like heavy playing online, trying to get like up there in rank and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny seeing like people I used to like beat all the time online, right? And now they're like higher ranked than me, even though like my my thought process of rank is like changed like drastically. It's funny seeing people. Who are up there higher ranks than me, and then it's like I play them right, and like I I barely lose to them. And it's like mainly because like I'm losing to myself because like oh I should have like reacted to this or hey I probably should have played a little more season five at the beginning so I can stop hitting crouch and medium punch every time I think something's gonna cross up or not. But uh, yeah, just playing these people and just like seeing the way they play like nothing's really changed. Yeah, I mean that's that sounds like a uh, Street Fighter Five online. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's with you there. And then uh, you know, then me is just like, get me out of here, throw me away. I try not to get too mad. It's like, all right, you know, look, look, I'm back on the saddle. You know, what I'm saying, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to write it. You know, you gotta, you gotta phrase it in the or like frame it in no, the way I'm that. Keep... Oh, huh? Oh, what? No, no I was what? Like, you, I was gonna, I was gonna say you gotta frame it in the way that, uh, you know. You 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 gotta get you gotta get your sea legs back. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You know, it's like it's like going back to the gym. You know, you know, a little winded. You know what I'm saying? Once you get back back on it, it hurts you know? at first. You know? What yeah, I'm yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but after a week, well, you're good. Yeah, it's like doing leg day every day. You know? Street Fighter Five leg day every day. Put that uh, put that on the That's... back of, back of the box. Yeah, but uh, other than that, yeah. So uh, what's going on with you, dude? What's going on with you, bro? Man, I don't know, man. Same, same stuff as normal. Uh, family life, you know, just uh, normal day to day stuff. Uh, I guess the only interesting thing that happened was so I was a part of the five v five exhibition that they just had last week between uh, NLBC and uh, RSF or Reddit, Reddit fighting, Reddit Street Fighter. So. I got rubbed into that, which that was pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. Um, it really made me wish that there was more like team based stuff like that. Uh, I'm notoriously bad though in team settings because I feel like I have so much pressure on my, on my shoulders to do well for others. Like it's easy for me to play in tournament. Cause like, if I fuck up, it's, it's like, okay, well, whatever, that's me. But like, I feel like I have the responsibility of like others at hand when I'm in a team tournament. So usually that makes me play worse. And I mean, I don't think I played super great, but I played enough to like 
take a game off of add on for like when I was anchor, but couldn't close it out. You know, he's a, he's an extremely good player, but hey. also, you know, I had nerves too. So that, that didn't help, but I ain't, I ain't trying to hear that shit. All right. Look, oh. you're, you're pretty gross. You know what I'm saying? I'm you know, okay. I give you, I mean, yeah. You know, look, I'm not trying to suck your dick or anything, but you know, you're pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think it's because you're my training partner and all. You know what I'm saying? I hold you to a higher standard. Look, look, man, I'd be watching you go to tournaments, bro, fucking up all these uh, internationals and like all these supposedly high level players, bro. Look, you run Brian S. throat every time you play him. Oh. And, uh, you know, I've seen this man get several top eights at the majors. So uh, you're, you're pretty good, though. You know, I'm just saying. Hey, I'll, but I wasn't good be, enough that but, day. Like, you should have beat Idom. You know what I'm saying? You should have bent them over, let them know. But, you know, hey, next time. Yeah, it, it, it'd it be like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But By the way, I like uh, Brian F. He's, he's cool. Yeah, that's the homie. Yeah, uh, he definitely be running his throat. <laughs> he did he, he did fuck <laughs> me up last time at NLBC online. So. Uh, see, now you can't. Now you got to get, get the run back, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a, that was a pretty good experience, man. Like I said, I I think, uh, I think that was like nice to see two communities go against each other like that. The only thing I wish I had done, which I had had the idea in the middle of it was what would have been cool to stream my side of it and have everybody in a discord call because like during it, we were all trying to figure out what our team order was going to be, who was going to go next. And, you know, everybody was hyped for a rush down, kind of getting the big lead early on. So I think it would have been cool to kind of capture that aspect of it, which missed opportunity on my part. But uh, yeah, I think there's uh, there's something there, you know, for somebody to maybe do more team based stuff and try and, you know, get input from each side of the team or whatever. So I think it'd be pretty cool to do. You know, this reminds me of what it reminds me a little bit, even though I wasn't like deep in like the SF4, like, online community like that back then but it kind of reminds me of that if you think about it right what you mean like so i think one of the things i saw seeing last week is like all the like the time to time to guess guys they're like money yeah. matching people i kind of want to see like a oh. 5v5 with those guys as well yeah and, um, maybe we might see you know, like a lot more people a lot more of these groups pop up online during all this because i don't think we're going to tournaments anytime soon <laughs> like this year oh, it's gonna be a while yeah, so I like to see more stuff like that pop up. That's pretty cool. You know what's funny to me is like you he brought up the money match thing is like I felt like in Street Fighter Five nobody ever won the money match. Like never. And you know, you'd see people at tournaments, and that was obviously like a, a huge thing in like the past era of games, but like nobody really does it in Street Fighter Five. But now in the comfort of the home everybody's home with CFN involved, everybody's like, Oh yeah, fuck it. Let's just uh you know what I'm saying, let's just throw some money up, you know. And I'm like, really? We're really doing this on CFN? It's unstable. Hey, you like got this. you got people calling like other people out, saying like they're trash, their playstyle is dookie. I, That's how I, bad of a hit people want of that that uh, <laughs> that adrenaline from tournament that they they're willing to just be like, you know what? I'm putting my money up. I, I need it. You know what I'm saying? That's how bad they want it. But hey, I respect it. I respect it. Um. <sighs> But anyways, enough bullshitting. So uh, this week, you know, I uh, had a long time or no, it was a long time. I guess I've known him for a while now, but I had a had a good friend, figured I'd hit him up, try and see, uh, you know, if he wanted to get on the show and talk about his background a little bit. So a uh, man who needs no introductions, but I'm going to ask him to introduce himself anyway. Hey, what's going on, folks? I'm Automatic. Today, we're going to talk about uh, frame traps and <clears throat> I don't know. We used to go by Jibbo. Real name's David Paul Maddock. Uh, stream a lot of fighting games. <laughs> That's pretty much the size of it. Street Fighter League Season 2. Community voted. That's pretty See. much the reasons, though. Evo Top 8 finalist. You forgot that. You know. Oh, Street Fighter Cross Tech. And that was, that's, uh, you know, those were the boomer glory days. Nobody <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody cares about the legendary Tagat <laughs> Jin that Infiltration copied, and I beat him with my own team. Give me that back. <laughs> So, uh, so, so yeah, I, uh, I guess I wanted to get a little bit of history, you know, a little bit of info on your background. Like what got you into the FTC? What got you into fighting games? Or you just kind of, this is basically your origin story, you know, however you want to, you know, spill it out. Yeah, sure. It's, I mean, depending on how detailed you want to get into it. Uh, well, super turbo 
Street Fighter 2, that came out in the arcades when I was really young. I mean, I don't even know how young, probably like six, seven, somewhere around there. And it was in like the gas stations, the grocery stores. Whenever I saw a machine, I was like, oh man, let me get a quarter, let me try playing this thing. But my older brothers were really into it. Um, I'm the youngest of five, of five brothers. Man. And they were Big much, family. much older than me. And if I'm six and they're 14, they're giants. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, to me, when I saw fighting games and I saw how much my brothers were into them, they would they actually bought like Super Nintendo and they got Super, like a Street Fighter Two when it came out on console. And I wanted to you know interact, be you know be cool. Yeah. So I always saw Street Fighter fighting games, even video games, as a way to connect with other people, and it's something that I've always enjoyed. Like I mean, that was you know how we always have like cell phones in our hands now. That was me back in the day with like a Game Boy, you know, the big green one. Oh, yeah. oh so Game Boy Color, the, right? Before no, that, the, was, old, the first one, yeah. It was just okay, green. You said the, you said the green one or gray? The green one. I had the gray one too. I think I still got it somewhere. Uh, I had the gray one. Place. But yeah, I was always I played a lot of Capcom games too. Like back in the day, I mean, even now, honestly, Capcom puts out a lot of good products for the most part. Yeah. But whenever I saw a Capcom logo or SquareSoft logo, Activision, or Konami, I was like, these got to be good games. So I always, uh, I was always trying to like play those games. All right. All right. I have a question to ask you. All right. Uh, what's your favorite Disney Capcom game? Disney Cap Disney Capcom. Yeah, like when they used to meet like Darkwing Duck and Aladdin. Uh, what's what's, up, what's the Mickey Mouse one? Uh, like Illusion Magical Quest, something like that. Yeah, yeah Magical Quest and all that. Yeah, I don't even know. I really don't know. Maybe the, the Lion Tales. King. I kind of remember the Lion King, but I don't well, know. If that I one was it. a virgin. That one's a virgin. Um, virgin mobile or virgin or whatever. Is that even virgin. Capcom? Yeah, that yeah, was I don't Capcom. Even know. yeah. So like Capcom did like the, the SNES version of Aladdin. Hmm. Oh yeah, Aladdin was pretty cool too. But that was one of those games that I go to my friend's house. I'm like, can I borrow this or something? Get to <laughs> trade something. <laughs> what, 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 did, what, what did you trade though? Oh, uh, whatever I beat, probably Super Punch Out. That was a hard one to let go. Probably my my favorite games for Super Nintendo were the Street Fighter games and some other like you know Mortal Kombat, whatever, yeah. and uh, the RPGs like Final Fantasy three, Super Mario RPG, and like these you know kind of almost random R- JRPGs like uh, what was it? Uh, Lufia, I think there was one that was a good one. It had some puzzles in it. It was pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. But yeah, I, I always. Saw video games as an opportunity to uh, communicate, relate with people around me, like my brothers. And that that same mentality carried me over to when I got older and I wanted to go to the arcade and play uh, Street Fighter, really. I mean, CVS 2 was actually the first game that I wanted to play in tournament. But I did better in Third Strike at the first tournament that I entered. I just entered it because I was like, ah, sure, why not? I'll play in it. And I actually beat, like, two people. You know, we're all, like, mostly not that good. I was playing somebody who was a military guy. He was playing Elena. I was playing Yang. And I just attacked him on wake up, and he tried to do like an EX move, and he got mad because I beat him. He didn't do an invincible move. He got mad. He was like, oh, but I did a gold move, man. What? I did a gold move. I was like, gold move? It's <laughs> EX, bro. You don't know the lingo. Hi, hi, hi. And I just, you know, low for a record. That's all I needed. Oh, boy. But yeah, that, that brought me to the arcades. The arcades introduced me to a lot of friends, like some of my best friends to this day. Uh, and I just you see generations pass, new kids, uh, new people playing the same third strike, CBS two, Mall two, and then you know Street Fighter four started to come out, arcades started to kind of go away. Uh, but you still had tournaments, you still had people setting up their TVs for tournaments. So you still meet new people, even though Street Fighter four, it's kind of I don't know, man. I, that that game was uh, uh, I don't, vanilla Street Fighter four wasn't wasn't that wasn't that fun because. Uh, I mean, but you you had you see you were the gin master back then though. Yeah, it was pretty much me and Yeb before Xian. But um what I what I really want to emphasize though is even though Street Fighter 4 I didn't really like it, I still loved that same thing that brought me to fighting games in the first place with seeing my brothers, like I want to do this, I wanna hang out with my brothers, you know, be able to compete, sharpen right. the blades or whatever, iron sharps iron, whatever. Uh then go to the arcades, meet new people, get better at the game. It still was there with Street Fighter 4, even though I didn't, you know, it's like that, that's really the, the driving factor is meeting new people, sharing these memories, being at Waffle House till three in the morning, uh, you know, getting better, winning tournaments, losing, 
traveling, coming back at four in the morning, barely barely awake. That's really like, that's, the, that's, the hook on it. That's something that did die out a little bit in between, like, I guess maybe Third Strike and Street Fighter 4, right? Mm, no. It got stronger because Street Fighter 4 was like a miracle. That game, yeah, when yeah, that yeah. came out, it's like, this is not supposed to be another Street Fighter. Third Strike, I was going to play it until I'm 70, which I probably still will. But yeah. Street Fighter 4 introduced, it just injected so many new people. So that was more opportunity to create cool memories, go to big major tournaments, just more people. It was like, I remember when Street Fighter 4 had like 300 entrants or something at final round. And it was like, oh, are you kidding me? This is insane. That many people? How are we going to, you know, that was that was that tournament that uh, there was that Kenso moment. Yeah. The tournament was crazy. That. that was a wild tournament. Yeah. I wouldn't know about that. I, <laughs> I wasn't there yet. I mean, I was... So, I mean, I guess I wasn't going to tournaments yet. I went to Final Round, I guess it would have been 20, was it 2010? Yeah, it would have been 2010, yeah. So that was the first Final Round. So I guess I missed that one. That was, that Kinsel moment was the first year of uh, Street Fighter, Street right? Street Fighter 4. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I went the next year. So, yeah, I had missed that. I've never seen it online, but. Yeah, Is that the year where they had, like, the giant, like, paper bracket? Yeah, that big paper bracket. Yep. Oh, yep. God. Yeah. <laughs> Man, oh. but yes, yeah, pretty much it to like transition to where I'm at now with Street Fighter Five. I uh, I don't even know which one I like better or worse between four and five. But what it's what's still there is the uh, it still can facilitate meeting new people, getting new friends, and now I try to take this role of helping people understand fighting games more so than I am concerned with uh, being the best fighting game player myself because that has been what has driven me since. Street Fighter 4 and, and before that is that experience. That arcade experience. It's hard to emulate it, but we're st I'm still trying to, like, uh, you know, recreate it. And it's hard to do that in, like, an online era, right? To try and, like, convey that type of feeling, you know, to, to, like, new players, right? Absolutely. I mean, when I stream now, uh, I do try to get better, play better, but I'm more interested in creating fun moments, being entertaining, trying to be humorous, and bringing people together and helping people learn how to play fighting games better. That's really my main focus. That out-prioritizes me playing the best character, the most winningest character, winning the most. Or any, like that, that has precedent for me. That's the, the hardest thing, though, is like trying to be... like Streaming fighting games is, I would say, one of the hardest things to do because... It's like you have to be engaging, but at the same time, it's like if you want to win, it's kind of hard to do. So it's like, you know, then you also have to remember that, you know, online just isn't the most fun thing to do sometimes. And it's like you have to fight with lag and, you know, trying to do that and engage with people and also not be in a shitty mood at the same time. That's it's definitely part of the skill. That's part <laughs> of the skill is to show that you can be cool while under the most total amounts of you know negative energy just being like an ocean wave coming your way you yeah. can't like you like well, some so i think people watch other people stream i'm guilty of it people watch other people stream street fighter five to see how salty they get oh yeah I think no, I'm def i've watch. definitely done that <laughs> no, he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> you, wanna, you like cheer for it, like oh 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 he's about to fight regime uh oh but when i have moments where um you know indifferent about it or if i laugh at it then I think other people are like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. It's really, really nice to just hang out here. So that, that is a skill on its own to be able to control your uh, your behavior while facing that kind of thing. Yeah, I definitely think you're uh, you're probably one of the best people at kind of rolling into it and not letting it, or at least not showing it, you know, that, is, that it gets to you if it does, you know. Just depends on the duration. If it's like one every other match, I might be able to deal with it. But it's like six or seven in a row. Uh, all right, guys, let's uh, let's do some match analysis. Let's watch somebody else <laughs> suffer. You never know. Yeah. It's like going into one of those RNG, like uh, slot machine. You know those gotcha games. That's what it feels like playing. Yeah. Five. Am I gonna get something next? You know, enjoyable? Am I gonna get the, uh, you know, one star minion? <laughs> <laughs> Who beats uh, me? You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, nah, I um, I totally get that. And, and like Tim was saying, I definitely uh, well, see, look. So I definitely I'm like Tim's training partner, and I and I try and like help him out as far as like you know teaching him stuff or like helping him with matchups and stuff. But 
I definitely show up in the in the stream just to kind of you know like give him shit about how he loses. You know, it's part of one of the reasons I'm there. But I'm pretty good about not doing that to other people. I think that's one oh. of the best things about fighting games is the people that are involved with it. I mean, you hear it for so many years. We got the best personalities. We got the most interesting storylines or whatever. But I feel like we don't do a good job of playing into that. Like you said, rolling into it as well. Yeah. I like the, I, the idea you had where you stream the Discord call while you're doing a team tournament. That's good stuff. That's something you yeah. barely... Like, you see it in Street Fighter League a little bit. Uh, and Street Fighter League is cool, but I like Smug and Dank. We're friends. But they're not like, I hang out with them all the time, friends. You know, that, that creates a different yeah. dynamic. It's people you're comfortable around. It's people that you really want to win because, you know, you're around them a lot. Yeah, you already build up relationships before all that. So it's like, you know, kind of have that going. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I guess what the question I wanted to ask too is like, so what got you into, because uh, you ended up coaching for Flipside for a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so how right. did that come about? Was that was like, the, the I guess your thing with teaching did that come from like a need or like people were coming to you for information or was it just kind of like it was an opportunity that was there and you just kind of rolled into it oh boy <laughs> well i had just got out the military uh so i had had quite a bit of money saved up and i was streaming starting to, i wasn't partnered at that time at all i was trying to like get there and build the stream up and I was super cautious, and I don't know—I don't know anybody like in the esports, whatever. Yeah. So I'm trying to feel it out and see what's going on. I'm getting some income from going to school using the GI Bill, uh, but pretty much my day at that point was just streaming, working out, school, and that was around tax season too. So I got a little bit of boost on that return. But after that, it's like I'm—I'm I'm almost literally on my own as far as that. So I'm trying to find a way to sustain being able to stream to support myself. And then the flip side opportunity came and uh, seemed like a opportunity to do what I like and make money off of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is, you, uh, uh, this okay, is in a territory no. where I don't, I don't know how much I should say because uh, it's not as if it's not as if I don't like anybody or this weird, you know, I left on good terms. I don't know if I want to skip to that part yet. But, uh, I mean, what I, what I probably should emphasize or mention is that fighting games in the esports universe are hard to justify being an investment Facts. For, an, for an entity. Yeah. So you really have to find the value within yourself. And that's what I did. Because with Flipside, that's what got me a Twitch partnership because they were partnered with Twitch. So uh. they, hooked, they hooked that up. And at the time, you needed like 500 concurrent viewers or something, maybe even more than that, to get a partnership with Twitch. So that, they helped me bypass uh, that, that, that whole sequence. So for that, I'm pretty thankful. Uh, and after I left, I just focused on building up the stream so I could be self-sustaining. So I wouldn't have to depend on any outside source for any kind of uh, revenue or, I mean, literally that's what it is. It took me about two years to not be, to not destroy my savings and now be in the positive where I can do a little bit more than just pay bills with it. And well, my life has changed drastically in the past few months uh, in terms of finances in a great way. I don't awesome. need to. I don't need to stream anymore. <laughs> Which, that's got to be an amazing feeling to, to know. You know, I, you could just wake up and just be like, you know what? I just don't want to do this today, and yes you and don't no. have to worry about you know, like you know, losing subs or anything like that. You know, it definitely refocuses some things. I don't want to say I was like held at gunpoint or I'm forced to play Street Fighter Five, but it was part of what like if i didn't stream street fighter 5 i probably couldn't pay the bills by streaming i had to go do something else so i it it felt like i'm doing something for the future even though right now i mean 
maybe it's not the best thing. You know, you want to have, if you're going to go this route where you're trying to support yourself doing something you love in this modern time with uh, all these weird ways of making money, uh, you know, I felt like that was worth it. It really was because I got to do what I mentioned earlier, and that is meet people, bring people together, and teach people about fighting games. And I got some opportunities along the way. But it is strange to sort of like assess the equation of I like something and I'm, I have to make money. <laughs> that kind of yeah. feels. Because then it could be you know, almost misconstrued that I'm only playing Street Fighter V for the money. But that's just a variable. It's not the whole scope of the reasoning process. Because, I mean, there's more to my personal career history. Uh, and part of that has to do with, you know, the recent... The, the recent... Okay, I got injured in the military. So um, I got um, some benefits from that recently. Oh, you got that uh, the VA check coming in. I see you. Yeah, but uh, that event kind of shaped my decisions for, for moving forward. Uh, because when I was in the military, I had this, I had this problem. I, I got some lower back issues, a bunch of other things. I, I'm, I'm fine, but it made me feel like I'm putting a lot on the line for something that I don't love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right. So then I feel like I'm in. I'm, at the time, I'm like I'm nearly thirty. This might be my last chance to, you know, work in a way that I feel like I'm not working. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I'm doing something I love, and I'm supporting myself. And you know, eventually I pay it forward, which I feel like is in, it's it's woven into what I do anyways with trying to teach people how to play fighting games and bring people together because that's what people did for me when I was going to the arcades. They, you know, taught me the ropes. They spent time with me until three in the morning, even though they didn't like even though they didn't like Thirst Strike, they were still playing because you know that's what you do when you're like that mentorship role. Do you have any uh? Uh, fond memories from, I guess, back in that era when you were when people would teach you fighting games. Uh, when I was starting to be pretty good at Third Strike, uh, who is now my best friend, uh, his name's Knuckle Dust. I didn't like him at, at mm-hmm. first at all. <laughs> he was kind of like angry all the time, and he was so stubborn in the game. And then, and then I was doing that that three a.m. session with him one day. And he got mad at me. He got he got so mad because I was beating him a lot. And then I was doing something else. And then I parried something that he did, even though I wasn't even looking. He was like, oh, my God, come on. You're not even looking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> I feel like everybody has that experience with somebody who they play with on a normal basis where, like, you know, you find that person and, you know, for a while they're, they're better than you and then. You get on equal footing, and then maybe one of you surpass, you know, you surpass him, and then they just have that. I mean, I don't know. I definitely have had, uh, you know, long nights of playing uh, one of my friends, and I know I'm pissing him off. I know, <laughs> I know he's annoying, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, you you keep playing, and it's you know, silent for like maybe two, three hours, but you keep playing. And at the end of it, you know, you guys are cool. You know, you say you you talk about it, and you know, just kind of move on and show up the next day and play some more. Yeah, those are good. That's. That's how you really become friends with somebody. You really know what kind of person they are, too. Yeah. I feel like if if your friend doesn't piss you off when you play them, you know, it's probably, you know, pro- probably not the, you know, probably not the best best session. So usually if I, you know, somebody's playing well enough to uh, annoy me, then uh, I think it was well worth it. Yeah, there's something about that where it's like you trust somebody that you're close with, with your anger, with your uh, angry emotions. Yeah. I'm not one of those people who show it. I might, I might be pissed. I'm, I'll just be quiet. You know, I don't, I don't really, I'm, I'm not like one of the guys. you it with me. How? No. If, how have I shown it? Fuck you. You've shown it with me before. When have I ever shown frustration to you? Unless Maybe it was like me. a decision you made. Yeah, it's I might be part, like, why would you do that? Yeah, that, there it goes. I think it was <laughs> <laughs> You could have died. Why would you even do that? But it hit them. There's like 15 other things you could have done except that. Golly, that is a Street Fighter V script. <laughs> you could have died. Why would you do that? But it hit, though. <laughs> well, as a former Marvel player, like, <laughs> I've always used that, like, but, but it hit. And 
I mean, what, what else are you going to say about that? It hit. But I, I do the head and nod, and I just I add that to the uh, the notes, and I just move on. <laughs> <laughs> like short term investments, like it worked now, but over a span of time, maybe you take less damage by having a different approach, and you win more matches. But at that moment, you can't. You just gotta be like, I hope he, yeah. I hope he learns. Like there are some things like I won't do against Greg. But I'll definitely do it against other people because, like, I know it won't work on him, right? If I do it once on him, it won't happen. It won't work again, right? But other people, it'll definitely work. Like, I, I get go, so mad seeing it because I'm just like, oh my god, you could just do this to beat this. Why are y'all letting him get away with it? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it's it's a beautiful thing when I do it. <laughs> if you if you want to say that, I I. Oh. Like, I like my dick gets so hard when I do like oh stupid shit God. like that. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> I gotta win with that. <laughs> uh, and granted, there's, no, there's no shame when it doesn't work. You're like, ah, okay, I tried it. Like, like, yeah, okay, you blocked it. That's cool. I might do it again, <laughs> but uh, now I know. But for the most part, they always get hit by it. And I'm just like, I don't have to tell you. So the back of my head, I'm like, damn, I probably shouldn't have done that. But look, it hit. So clearly, I have like a read or something. Hey, man. It's like when she tells you, like, man, your dick is small, but it's still beat. You feel me? (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) All right. But moving on. (laughs) How are you going to transition for that? All right. Um, So uh, you're located in North Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Um,. So I'm guessing, like, you know those guys, like, food stamp and all those guys? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, give us, like, an uh, insight of your scene. Like, how often do you normally go out? Oh. Uh, like... I don't go to tournaments as often as I should anymore. Because I really – my old friends, they're not into Street Fighter Five at all. They don't, they don't get into it. Sometimes there's, like, a third strike tournament there at the same time, and you might see a handful – I feel like I go maybe once every three months to a tournament. I was running tournaments at Stop Button, and those were good times. I mean, I haven't ran any recently because of the pandemic, but I also haven't been running them recently because, you know, other things like Street Fighter League or something else is in the way. Uh, but, yeah, we got actually a lot of players around the state. Charlotte's got a scene, Raleigh, Greensboro, Fayetteville is where I'm at. No Kami, he, the Dragon Ball Fighters player. He got top yeah. eight, the first evil. He's in, uh, he's on the east side. I forget exactly which city. Maybe Jacksonville or something like that. But we got a lot of strong players here. I wish we had more unity, in some ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of good people here. That's kind of the same issue that we have, I guess, in Alabama. It's like when we have. I wouldn't say we have a lot of players, but we do have some. But it's just everybody's kind of uh, so far away from each other. So it's hard for everybody to get up and, and, you know, either meet up for casuals. Like, you know, the closest, probably like the closest person I'm uh, I'm to is like an hour and a half away. Something like that. So it's like you really got to want to play people to to go out. And, you know, you really got to want to get better, I guess, to want to have to drive an hour and have to play somebody. Which, you know, some people, you know, they're not that invested in it so I mean, right. it is, I guess. the drive it is what it is but that's where online is a blessing and a curse because it's so easy to just want to just stay at home and play a few matches online get salty and then be done with it but before online you had to go to the arcades so you had to either organize with your friends or just go there and see if anybody shows up and if they're good and if you find somebody who's good and you don't know them that's going to become either your friend, rival, or enemy, or it's going to be somebody that you, you're going to be thinking about. Like, if you lose to them, like, who was that? And then you hope the next, you're going to keep going back to the arcade to play whoever this person was. Right. But it's not, you don't really have that dynamic so much online anymore. There's, there's not much, there's no in-person experience. You can't really emulate that until they have, like, VR arcades or some weird thing. But that's yeah. one thing you cannot like. Uh, a friend of mine made a good point about the 30th anniversary 30th anniversary collection. They say it's arcade perfect. And besides, 
not really, you know, whatever, refresh rate's not the same or it doesn't have the same input delay. That is, you know, that's true, but that's not really what Arcade Perfect also should mean. Because going to the arcade and being there physically in person and having this experience around you, that you can't, can't, can't duplicate it by playing online. Yeah. You can get close to it, but you, just, you can't really communicate with the person you're talking about or talking to or playing against. Yeah, you don't have that, that same feedback loop, I guess, of like, you know, you can't just, you know, ask the person, why would you do this? Or like, what do I do against this? What do I do against that? And, you know, or, you know, have those long conversations after you're done playing. Yeah. That's a little bit unfortunate because in some ways I feel like, Fighting games, the the rate at which the people learn is faster than ever. Uh, fighting game comes out in two weeks. We we are like pretty comfortable. We know how to play it for the most part. It used to take years to get like what we can do in two weeks now would have took years in the older games, yeah. but we don't have the arcade style uh, uh, medium to. You know, really bring it full circle. Some places do. I think Japan has those sort of cafes. Those are probably yeah. super awesome. Which, I mean, I guess they kind of have, well, I guess the U.S. has some of those. But obviously, you know, we don't have that strong of a, a group of players within, you know, that close of a proximity. So it's kind of, kind of doesn't work exactly the same way. But, yeah. Yeah, I just um, think New York, Texas, California, and some spots around the U.S. What was it where is where is uh Marine? I think that's minute Marine Joey. Wherever they're from, they got a good uh, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they probably play often in person. That's really cool. So then I guess that uh leads me into the last thing I want to talk to you about. So as somebody who has had experience teaching fighting games to other you know other players, um. One thing I think developers aren't doing a great job of right now is like teaching the, you know, teaching players, new players, how to get into the game or, um, so I guess if, uh, if you had any ideas, do you have anything that you can think of that you think developers could do better about teaching players, you know, how the concepts of, uh, you know, like the fundamentals in fighting games, man, it's hard. Yeah. Like individually, each concept. Like, I'm always amazed when I'm teaching somebody, like, an aspect, anti-air, whiff punish, uh, proactive foot, like, anything. Individually, people pick it up so fast, and they're like, wow, I can do it? Wow. It's like they learn about jazz music for the first time, and you show, oh, just play these notes, and you'll be right. like, oh, really? That's it? This chord? These notes? Man, jazz. Maybe it's not so bad. But, you know, bringing all the elements together, that's the diff- Bringing the elements together and... The person willing to participate that they like they they want it, you know, that's mm-hmm. the hard part. Uh, but it maybe this is beside the subject, but it always seems like every fighting game there's something wrong with it. Something that is blatantly like, come on, you can't you can't give it. Let me get that. Like, okay, we got a great net code, but it's on Xbox, but it's on PC. Oh, yeah. yeah, like years later. Or, you know, hey, this game, I don't want to get on my phone. <laughs> you know? Hey, man, go ahead. And, it's, it's fine, man. It's no, fine. man. I, it's, it's fine. But as far as teaching people how to play a fighting game within the game, I don't know. It's really tough. I, I feel like you need, well, it's accelerated greatly when you have a mentor. I think right. streams are excellent for teaching people. Uh, You can get a lot done uh, just by talking to people and helping them out individually and making videos that blanket. But as far as in the game, they probably think that it's not worth their development cost to implement some kind of training mode to teach people how to... I mean, sometimes I think maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't want to be wrong. Maybe they don't want to put something in the game to teach you the concepts that they intended to to play the game with. And that's not really what you, you know, you know, what I'm saying really, that's not really what they what you want to do. Like yeah. if they had CBS two, they teach you how to do roll cancel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But wouldn't that wouldn't that be like more of an accident? Like that wasn't like intentionally. Well, that was like a glitch, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but if they develop the game and then they teach you the way to play it, but the game development isn't sound and there's stronger strategies that are stronger, like such as Jump Back OS, they didn't intend for oh, that. Yeah. I don't think they intended for that to be in the game if they took it out like that. Yeah. But it was a really strong strategy for like a defensive option. But in the training mode, it probably, if they were to theoretically put a way to deal with Jump Back OS, but they didn't mean for that to be in the game, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be there in the first place. Right, right. But I would, what I would like to see is teaching players how to solve the problems, like understanding what a case could be and what the potential solution could be and what has more value or what are your options? Like what, what are the ways to deal with it? Not just one way or two ways, but, you know, and then reasoning, like what is the logic behind what your opponent is doing? Stuff, something like maybe, oh, well, your opponent has tech to throw it, you know, every single time. Well, you know, what's the giving them like, okay, well, this is what you can do now since you've established this part of your game. You know, you could do this now instead. Yeah, and I, I even think that maybe it would give a way for players to blame the training that they received from the game. It was like, well, when I did training and they taught me how to beat backdashes, my opponent didn't backdash. And then I got woke up, he hit, he hit buttons on wake up when I got counter it. I don't know. I just would like there to be some kind of way to teach people the possibility, like the events that could happen and why you would do one thing over the other. That's one thing that probably isn't taught enough is you have one option, but they have the potential for all these other options. So what happens when two things collide that aren't intended? Usually to scramble, but it doesn't always have to be. You yeah. could be pre-sorted pre, uh, out. Yeah, I think that, that makes sense. But if you don't um, understand the in the concepts individually in the first place, everything's a scramble. Yeah, because you just don't know what to look for at that point, right? Right, right. I think the thing that I kind of hope that developers figure out like later on or, you know, or I guess sooner, but um, is just a better feedback loop for players. I feel like just playing fighting games in general, it's just like playing fighting games online. Let me let me specify it that way. Like, it's just not a very positive feedback loop, right? You just, you get online, you either gain points or you lose points. And for the most part, like, you don't really, I guess, maybe for like a newer player, you don't really understand why you're losing, right? So it's just kind of like, you just show up, you do good one day, you do bad the next day, and that's kind of it, right? You know, but there's there's no other way, I guess, for them to give you goals or whatever, other than just mm. achieving new ranks, right? Yeah. Uh, I feel like they're trying to do that, but I think that that concept is approached by the game design. So winning and losing is the base level of positive and negative feedback for, I think, most players. So if you make the game easier to play, you might win more often, and that's the positive feedback loop. I think that they try to... That was their way of addressing that. Yeah. But I, I don't think it should be leaning solely on the on the reducing the game i i wish there was more uh education but that's the, even just saying education out loud i was like oh, i gotta study to play this game like, yeah <laughs> I, feel like, I, feel, I feel like you have to study to play any game if you want to get into it like competitively well not right? really like fortnite right like the so, think of something like that right i feel like a game like that is gonna no matter if you do bad right you're still getting something out of it right i mean you, nobody wants to be the first one dead but like you know you're still gonna get something eventually out of playing it right yeah you're getting that adrenaline hit when you're playing when you queue up for a battleground you don't know what's around the corner there's a bit of like oh i just got a nice weapon you know and whether i win or lose i'm getting some experience points and then i can buy whatever you don't really get that in fighting games, I don't think. I think you still get some fight money if you just participate, but does anybody yeah. really value that? No. No, not anymore. Yeah. Um, what what is I mean, by the way, what is the purpose of playing online? Like especially for I guess maybe you two? I, I've been feeling that myself was like I've gotten to grant I've gotten to fifty thousand with Sagat. And even that was like I was surprised I even played that much to get to that position. Hey, what's I every time I see someone who's warlord, I'm like, what have you done? I could have learned like three <laughs> languages. You you got it, man. You did it. So for me, it's kind of a means to an end because like I don't have like a huge offline scene. I mean, I did play pretty normally offline, like maybe like 
you know, I would go to my local, which was like every month, but like, you know, we get up every now and then, like maybe once or twice a month and, and play. So, I mean, I had that, but it was mostly just for like experience because like I knew I had to keep playing the game to like, you know, stay, stay sharp. And it was like, okay, well, you know, I would play rank just for kind of pools practice. Right. It's like, I, I'm going to queue up against somebody. I have no idea who they are. I have no idea how they're going to play probably. And I have to kind of figure it out on the fly. And, uh, it, you know, playing rank just kind of forces you to have like a good, uh, I guess flow chart. So it's like, okay, I know I'm going to do this as a person. They're probably going to do this instead. So, or they're going to do this in response. And then I need to have, you know, what I need to do against them, you know, if they respond to this and make, uh, make adjustments based on what they do. So that's kind of like, well, I would play online a lot, I guess, but with the tournaments going away like that, I took it like my motivation for playing just took a hit. Cause it's just like, I don't really want to subject myself to this not cause there's, there's no tournament. So it's like, how much do I really want to, how much do I really want to do this? But, um, you know, like the online tournaments coming back or, or like blowing up, I guess that definitely kind of, it's not the same a hundred percent, but I definitely get a little bit of a, that a, adrenaline rush when you play. Yeah, um, I, I took a, I took a hit too. I don't even go to tournaments like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think for me, it was just more of, like, trying to, like, keep up with this guy. Because, like, I seen where, where he was at. And also, like, well, I'm playing birdie, right? I also want to be, like, one of the best birdies in the world. And so, like, I was just using just the rank system. Just, like, if I see, like, as long as I don't see four digits by my name, I was fine, right? Mm. And then, like, I think I think after a while, I think once they announced those two new ranks... I was like, bro, I, I can't. <laughs> like, for me, it was like, I can't. And also, it was like, I was more focused on trying to have better tournament results, if that makes any sense. And, like, granted, I have to use online, but, like, when I try to play, I try to do, like, different things, which sometimes, for me, I go on autopilot. After, like, maybe 10 games, I'm, like, on autopilot because, like, at that point, I'm, like, bored when I'm playing. Mm -hmm. and so, for me, it's just, like... All right, I want to try to learn new things. I think after a while, I just got burned out as well. Like, burned I think the out. game burns like the game burns you out really quick. I think definitely, definitely does. I like some of the points you made about having some sort of rival. Like you see there, they they it makes you feel like they've gotten ahead of you. So you're like, oh no, I I know I'm better, so I'm gonna keep playing. So you know, this doesn't you know, yeah, it show that somebody else is doing something that I'm not. But what you also mentioned, I think, is interesting, is the idea of ranking in at least your area. Like, maybe, maybe you're not the best birdie in America, but you're the best birdie in wherever you're from. And that would be a good thing, I think, to highlight for... Like, I think there's ways to do that. You can see who's the best in your region, that kind of thing. But I think it would be interesting if you could see in North Carolina, this person has done the... He's, like, the highest ranks I got, whatever level... I think that'd be uh, cool to see. Yeah, so like my thing was like, all right, so close, of course we have like the whole global, right? You can see who's all the best in the world. But for me, I didn't care about like the whole global thing just yet, right? Because like for me during that time, it was like, all right, uh, my main goal was to get top 10 in NA. I achieved that. I was like, all right, cool. Now, I think once I achieved that goal, right, then like I, it kind of expanded like, all right, cool. Can I get like top 25 in the world? Did I get it? No. But that was like a thing that was like driving me until I just kind of like crashed and burned. I just started focusing like on other things. Yeah, that don't sound fun at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no it's, it's not fun. I like, dude, there were, like I there are times like I was streaming and like it was funny enough, right? Because like when I stream, I feel like I was just playing like shit. And then when I I turned off the stream, I was like, all right, cool. I lost a lot of points today. Let's try to get these back. And like off I'll stream? start I'll start playing off stream. <laughs> right and like i'll get the points back and my i knock so tomorrow will come right I'm like all right boys <laughs> we're back you know what i'm saying how to play off stream a little bit you know you then like you'll see like a nice little 10 moon streak by my name just to be like all right cool yo <laughs> i was putting in work like off stream but now it's just like all right i have to get back and holy hell it's uh <laughs> it's rough to say the least i kind of i miss that feeling, like where you feel hungry, I I want to have that feeling, but uh, it's hard for me to find it. 
like uh, Samurai Showdown, Grand Blue. I picked up those games really quickly. The Sam Show, I was like top 20 when the game first came out the first couple of weeks. I was really high up there. Grand Blue, I got the S rank super fast. But then I run into like a fizzle. I run into either, like, well, namely those two games was netcode issues and lobby, UI. And it just, this is, it always seems like there's an obstacle to prevent me, like the hunger. I get full really fast. Yeah. Uh, I definitely get uh, Oh, go ahead. No, I'll say, I, I definitely get where, where you're coming from on that. Because then you, then you look at Street Fighter V again, it's like, man, maybe I can kind of go back to that. It's like home base, but like the roof leaks. I got to fix the air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, what is that mold? How do I get mold? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back to uh, Grand Blue and Sam Show. I was going to ask: Do you think you getting burnt out on those games has anything to do with like? Because I feel like you play at an accelerated pace because you're streaming them. So it's like obviously, like you know, you play the game, you know, for a pretty good amount, right? So I don't know if if you were, let's say, like casually playing, if you would run into it that quick or not. I th- that's a really interesting point because probably part of what drove me to play third strike was I wasn't that good. So I had a lot, I had a lot of room to improve. And I think that is one of the bigger underlying motivations for me is I want improvement. And that is also why I pick characters that sometimes suck because they have a lot to improve with. And I really think you're onto something there. When I, when I feel like I've capped, or I lost, I lose interest in improving. And that's or, or if there's an obstacle such as netcode, then I'm like, eh, okay, what am I doing this for? Yeah, I mean that's understandable. I, mean, I feel like you hit the game. nail on the head like that for me sometimes. Except what? the whole switching like a, to another character type thing. Like I'll try to learn another character, and then like I'll come across something. I'm just like, I could just go back to playing Birdie. So you hmm. gotta. You gotta push through it at that point, I guess, if you yeah. if you uh I mean which is hard. I mean, don't get me wrong, but yeah. No, but no, I like the way like automatic took his approach in terms of like learning a new character. He always made like another account. Something not like always. Uh, yeah. I, not I always. Yeah. Uh, but I felt like I was contributing to grief to enough people, even though you probably should be like, ah, whatever. And some people like it. They're like, oh man, I get to play, you know, whatever. Uh yeah. it's just uh, yes, whatever. I think it's even in- more interesting to start where it's super uncomfortable rather than ease into it. I think that's a good thing to showcase, to show people how to get to one rank to another, even with if it's with a new character. A lot of people love the Cody videos that I did from like Rookie to Diamond. Yeah. Uh, but I think that it's more challenging, maybe more interesting to me if I just play it wherever I'm at. Man, like my main account right now, my main PC account that has all the characters, that's in Master. I've been playing with Gil, Seth, Sagat. Uh, and I play some people who are like grandmasters. Oh, you had your Smurf account? Oh, I see you. Good games. Play on your Smurf. Like, come on, man. <laughs> you gotta make it a big deal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Master. I'm sorry. I feel like people gave you more shit when you were doing the rookie to like whatever. Like people would come in to do a stream chat. And, yeah. That is there. Know. I think Ooh, like holy people, come on, man, You're a bunch of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think if I did something like that, trust me, it would take me like a year to get to master with like said new kid I'm learning because it's like, oh no, it, <laughs> like I can, like I'm trying to think, how long did it take? I swear, man, when I when I learned Blanca, it took me like maybe two months tops to get GM. Like it was Dang. pretty quick. Like, I mean, but the, fair enough. I don't think people knew the matchup. So it's pretty easy just easier. to kind of gimmick people out with V Trigger too. The more time you yeah. practice, the easier it's going to get, anyways, because yeah. the, the LP is spread out. Like what what is a master now is what a diamond, excuse me, used to be. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, they all are. Uh, they're all something out there. And I think once you get to around Ultra Diamond, maybe even Master, the you're there's not there's a limit to how much more you can learn by playing online. Like you're pretty much eighty percent there once you get to diamond or master. Like go go play offline. <laughs> yeah. I just wish, uh, oh, there. go ahead. I was saying sometimes they just don't even go off. They don't even come offline. You know what I'm saying? They just stay at home. I think that's hey, look, that's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I wish everybody could, uh, you know, experience you know fighting games offline. But you know, if that's if it's not your thing, you just don't want to do it. You know, fair enough. You know. Is it is what it is. 
Yeah, fighting games are weird, man. <laughs> they really bring out some of the, the some of the qualities. Like, like man, it's so there's so many ends of the spectrum. You might meet someone who's the best friend of your life. You might see you might be somebody who's like awesome. You play him a game, meet him in person, like oh boy, oh uh, yeah yeah, good games. Uh, nice to meet you. All right, listen, man, I got a phone call. I'm a little smoker. Uh, <laughs> I've definitely met some uh, interesting people in my in my long time in the FGC. All right, I think uh, I think that's all I had, man. Timmy, do you have anything else you wanted to ask him? Yeah, I got uh, one more thing. So, uh, how do you feel about this whole uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken like baby resurgence happening? Oh man, moment? I've uninstalled Cross Tekken like seven times. Man. I tried uh, Tampa Bison because of my straight. He first to find me right now. Street Fighter Five. I'm like, all right, let me sign into Windows Live. Ah, oh, I forgot my password. Let me read. Okay, I have to fill out like three images. Click on the crosswalk. Which one's a buzz? All right, fine. Okay, cool. I got the login. We play it. Connection's not good. Man, I can't do this no more. And I, I, I feel like it's not the same either. And the whole history of the game, uh, I guess it sort of left a bad, bad taste. I mean, How so? It's a good, because of the way it's. <laughs> You know, they called me the general. Of the, they called me cross tech and defense force. I embraced it because, you know, humor. But people were serious. Like, they did not like the game. And I was like, yeah, this game's pretty good. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things that you know, you know, gems. I know. This is, there's things wrong with it. Yeah. So I feel like it was every, everyone's fault that the game died. And a lot of people like, I was like, yeah, in 2013, yeah. the game was pretty good. But there's so many things that went wrong. It had so much potential too. Like the the team, the two v two things. That was that's, that got, that's, that could be so cool, man. But uh, it's short lived for a reason. So whenever I see it come back and hey man, you should play. Uh, uh, come on, go ahead and play it. Go ahead and stream it. You know, there's a lot more people apparently playing. They even have a Discord for it. I gotta install it one more. Oh yeah, and then it's like you gotta use this community patch. You gotta yeah. install this thing. Oh, another community patch? I don't know. I, I thought it was to get rid of the extra Windows Live stuff. Really? No, no, no. I never got rid of it. I've been using it just fine. Well, uh, that's what I thought it was, but I might be wrong. Uh, I don't know. I know. I know. Like, I know. Like MK9, like like the PC community, they have like some weird community patch they got going on. You also should or, play uh, Cross Tech. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Cross Tech and should be played with gems, but. People are resistance and for a reason. Some of the gems are unbalanced, and that's never going to change. So it's like the correct position is to not play with gems, but uh, taking a layer of strategy out the game at that point. Yeah, I had this busted combination where one gem acted activated with the launch. Well, what's the guy? What I did with the like with the neutral stand medium kick was super good, and you could confirm it into the launch. So I would do that into Jin, and I would launch again, and it would activate two of the DLC gems. And one of the one of the gems gave you oh, a percentage God. meter build, and the other one built meter over time, so it stacked. <laughs> so oh, if I launched, geez. I got a full bar. I got more than three bars if I did this launch combo. It was so silly. I think I still have my uh, my collector's edition, like little arcade, like money, like piggy bank or whatever when I got it. And just thinking about it now, man, that was a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, like five years later I go back and buy it on PC for whatever reason. Yeah, I, I stopped playing cross tech and I got ninety nine I got over ninety nine wins online. It doesn't go over ninety nine. Wow. Only That's person bad. that well there was very few people online that could beat me. Cool kid was one of them. Oh, I remember that. Didn't uh, he make like the like uh, made Capcom Cup one of the early iterations for it? Um, I remember a final round tournament. He beat Infiltration. So yeah, that was yeah, like when okay. Infiltration was on his hot streak and uh, in every game, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, that was his first tournament too. He beat Infiltration. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, man. Yeah, I, I thought you were gonna stories about infiltration. I, I thought you were gonna say the reason why you didn't want to play it was just the stakes weren't there anymore, which was 
that's what happened with me in Street Fighter Four. Like, you know, when when Street Fighter Five came out, you know, there's you know there's still people, you know, trying to fly the flag of Street Fighter Four. But it was like, I mean, as much as I did enjoy that game, it's just like the stakes weren't there anymore. Like, it just that wasn't the main competitive game anymore. So it's like, while it was cool, like I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna get to play, you know. Kazunoku and Kazunoku anymore, and you know what I mean. Like I wasn't gonna get to play like that level of player anymore. And I was yeah. like, I couldn't do that. It was like it's it kind of took the fun out of the game for me. You're right. I th- I didn't even think about that. That's probably like a higher ranking than what I mentioned. It's just not the same. And some things you need to practice for that game. Like Ryan Hunter, he'll probably never touch it again because he has some Julia Steve. He has some cool combos, like reasoning processes. They're probably all lost, and it's. It probably doesn't feel fun to just relearn something for not much. Like, to what end? What, what, am, I, what am I doing this for? All right. I can respect that. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show, Jibbo. Thanks so much. This was uh, it's cool to have you on. I don't feel like I've had, like, a long time to, like, you know, talk to you or whatever. So it was kind of cool to do this. I'll take a step out the retirement home for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I might have to join you on uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Probably, you know, I, I did. I just said I was probably going to download that this weekend. So, like, like still Greg, so- you're so mu- you're so much of an old man. You couldn't get Call of Duty to work, bro. Bro, no, look, that's fucking whatever. I'm not even about to go in on that. That's a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, it's you a got free game, that. Tim. <laughs> I should just be able to download it, log into my account, and it should work. I don't need to Google. Why it's not logging me <laughs> into the client? There's, there's too many steps. All I wanted to do is try your game. That's all, You're just proving my point do. right now. <laughs> all I wanted to do, I, it should work. It's point. a free game. Dang, it man. should just work. Like I get it. I get it. You sound real old. <laughs> you sound real old. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. Dang recipe on the internet. It's got these weird videos. <laughs> step processes. <laughs> I shouldn't have to do that, man. <laughs> Whatever happened to bacon and eggs? Right. Um, oh boy. All right, cool. Well, if you got you got your socials you want to plug, man, where anybody can find you at? Man, I'll be all right. I'm automatic. Also known as Jibbo. <laughs> <laughs> my my last like, name that's the handle. I changed it because I was making music, and I didn't want Jibbo to be the music name. All right, Tim. Want to plug your uh, socials and what you got going on, man? Yeah. Uh, before I do that, um, what about this do rag cup, man? Really? Yeah, you just man. gonna put me on the spot while we're recording? Look, look, look. All I'm saying is this: it doesn't need to be like a, a weekly thing, a one-time event. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want it to be. It's a one-time thing. Well, let me get in there. Uh, I'll do some receding hairline waves. I got it. <laughs> 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 you know, all I want to do is send the winner, you know, maybe put a little money in their pocket, right? And then send them a silky smooth. That's all I want to do. Well, you got to send them that and you got to send them the sporting waves or the, uh, you know, I might the... have a, I might have like a thing around here somewhere. Once I get my hair cut, you know, I might have an extra one of those tubes laying around here, the sporting waves, you know what I'm saying? 360 style. You know he said style. Hey, I, I'll send them. A, I'll send them a wash rag with it. You know what I'm saying? Tell them put them in their head for like you know a minute to soften the hair. Then you apply. See you now know. you're giving out the tips, the pro tips. Hey, this is this is the beginner tips. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, you know what, what about this man? Uh, look, I think we should do. I think we should, I think we should, this weekend. I don't have much. I don't have too much going on this weekend. You need to sit down. And uh, you know, try to try to plan this out. Look, man. Let let me let me figure out the details, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can throw something together. All right, I respect that. But uh, so my socials, right? So uh, you know, follow me on Twitter at four h ten. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, if you want to see the chronicles, uh, you want to see me. Get back to my prominence, you know what I'm saying? Catch me on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash 4H underscore Tim. You know what I'm saying? Um, Normally, at this point, I will uh, try to plug my supposedly OnlyFans, but I've retired from OnlyFans. I'm glad Um, you did that. I just wasn't getting 
the the revenue I was uh, expecting from it as expected. Um, okay, and uh, you know, so <laughs> we might we might bring it back. You know what I'm saying? You know, if I start feeling sexy again, I'll bring back the only fans. But gotcha. uh, but yeah. Well, what about you, man? How do I how do I contact you, bro? How do I uh, contact you? Hit me up on Twitter at Boombox Zero. Uh, also stream on Twitch from time to time. Usually Street Fighter Five, but also have been playing a bunch of other stuff like Borderlands Three lately, and uh, just random stuff. I think I live stream a couple of those Instagram battles. So, uh, but yeah, you guys can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash magnegro with a zero instead of an O at the end. And uh, also you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash magnegro. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. But uh, like I said, Jimbo, appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, he kept this a secret all week. I was like, yo, who you getting on here, bro? <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I got to keep it a secret. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm your co-host. <laughs> huh? I wanted to keep it a secret, man. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to surprise you, man. What's uh, wrong with that? I'm going to keep it PG-13. Well, this PG-13. helped me feel productive. I've been in the retirement hole for a long time. so I'm Now it's time for you to get out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead. Let's uh, let's let's get this Street Fighter Cross Tekken stream going on. You know, I'm trying to see you come back. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to join it with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, dust off the Paul and Cody. Man, you know what happens if I get an uppercut trade in cost Tekken? You know what happens if it's a guy gets the uppercut trade? I Ooh. die. And I, I, I'm not going to have to do it 10 times in that game. I don't have to uppercut 10 <laughs> times and maybe one of them misses. I, go to, I auto-correct but still whiff under G for some reason. I get crush countered. V trigger activate. Nah, nah. They don't happen as much in Street Fighter cost Tekken. <laughs> All right, like, then. Bam, uppercut, toward heavy kick, uppercut, tag out, heavy punch, boom, 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 medium line destruction. Oh! That sounds like a dead character at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm willing to take my chances. I'm trash, but I'm willing to take my chances. So, uh, hey, look. Yeah. I'm willing to see it. You know, I'm willing to watch it. All right. I'm willing, maybe I'm I'm willing to be a part of it. I'll install Cross Tekken for an eighth time. That's that's all I like to hear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's all I ask. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, uh, well, that's it, man. We will uh, be back next week with another show. I don't know who we're gonna have, but uh, keep it a surprise. So, uh, we'll no, see. how about you tell me? No, no, I can't. I can't do that. But uh, appreciate everybody checking this out. Y'all, uh, y'all take it easy. <laughs>